Azami is one of the most fun operators ever released in Rainbow Six, but even more than that, she has the most unique ability of all, her Kima Barriers. These barriers take defending to a whole other side we've never seen in this game, and there is a ton to explore with her. Today I'm not going to go over the most broken spots or one-way angles to make with Azami, but instead go over the fundamentals of her gameplay and explain the best ways to use her to your advantage to actually win more of your ranked games. This video is not a quick fix as a temporary source of success, but rather a guide so that you can continuously use Azami even throughout different meta shifts and counters. After watching this video, you'll understand how to use Azami on a fundamental level to maximize your win rate with her while being able to maintain a creative approach to playing her so that you can constantly switch it up without throwing away your chances of winning. So the first thing we have to talk about if we are going to talk about the best way to play Azami is what not to do while playing Azami, or the worst way to play Azami. And instinctually, when you play Azami, you might just think, okay, well I can patch up holes, I can block off doorways. This is the the typical thing that you would think about right off the bat is 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 she does patchwork she does reconstruction she does this rework but this is actually how you don't want to play her so let's say the team other team aces a hole up here right let's see they ace the other the, the wall open and you're like okay well i want to patch it up so you throw a couple chemo barricades boom all of a sudden the breach is gone your defense is much more solid right well no not really because as an attacker after you open this wall and see this, all you have to do is melee it three times, and boom, your breach is open again. So, using that is kind of a waste. It only maybe stalls about five seconds of time. It only takes three melee hits to break them. So, using on them on Maverick breaches, or uh, regular breaches like this, or windows that are opened, or anything where the attackers can actually melee the barricade is going to be unideal when playing a zombie. So, that is step one of not being garbage or step one of winning more would be to avoid uh being useless with a zombie because essentially that's what it is is useless there are some very specific situations where patching up breaches like this or patching up doorways or windows are actually good they're actually a good way to play it um but most of the time this is going to be when you are actually making a play so let's take uh the trophy window for example so let's say i have a guy an attacker outside the trophy window and he, maybe he's standing here like this holding the cross so that way I can't flank the stairs and I can't flank their team who may be like trying to take solar or something so if I know this guy's out trophy window maybe I do a quick peek and he shoots at me I can then block off the window right I can block off the window which will hit, take him three melee hits to to open back up again and after I block that off I now no longer have to worry about him watching the flank from here. This is my time to cross the window. So you can use the barricades, the chemo barriers, sorry, to cross open spaces that you normally wouldn't be able to because you have these attackers holding these cuts. So if you know where they're holding the cut from, it's very, very strong to throw your barricade down and then cross the room. So now that I've barricaded this, I can safely cross and flank the the attackers up here and shoot them in the back because their teammate was no longer able to hold their flank from them. So using the barricades on flanks can be a great way to do it if you are going to use them on like uh, the windows, for example. Um, but if this is just a regular round and I'm just regularly trying to block off the window so they don't come in from here, well, it's very easy for an attacker to outside to just, again, melee open the barricade and then my barricade is completely useless. So another example of using the barricades well for this for this purpose so let's take the same breach for example as the as the first example when i said not to do it and now let's say the attackers have planted right and we're trying to retake so rather than just coming through the open like this maybe i throw a i throw a barricade first or a couple if i have if i have multiple and that makes it a much harder for the attackers to watch through this hole right and it allows me to come up here and fight back so you can use the barricades to gain gain that space back again um or if they have the canine door open and the breach rather than pushing up having to worry about both of them having to watch both areas maybe i throw a barricade at the door and then that way i only have to worry about being killed from the breach or a lot of the time there will be a an attacker out this window during a plant which would allow you to barricade it off and maybe swing the planter as they're planting so if somebody is out here, an attacker, saying, oh, they can't they can't swing piano like I have your cross, or they're up on this roof holding the cross, 
a zombie can say, hey, uh, no thanks, block it off with their barricade, and then kill the planter on this default half wall plant, right? Without being exposed. Or throw a barricade here if they're piano, and then swing off the barricade to kill the plant. So you can use the barricades to retake the site super, super effectively. This is one of the only operators that can do this. The only operator that can do this so well and so strong. Smoke is another good example where you could smoke off a line of sight, but you can still shoot through the smokes, you can still see through the smokes, and it's very situational where you can actually use those smoke grenades to do this. But a zombie is absolutely amazing at it. So this is one of the this is one of the greatest ways, in my opinion, to play a zombie. So now let's take the other site, for example. Let's say the attacker's planted behind the bed here, and they may be holding it from the rappel or the stairs or something along these lines where they're they're contesting the plant from back here. What you can do with the barriers again is throw it at the doorway, block out the line of sight, and just defuse. Because the attackers would then have to run up from the stairs, melee this, melee it again, melee it again. And by the time they do that, you might already have the bomb defuse. Now, of course, you could also bait this where you bait the defuse, they melee on that third melee, you come up and swing them as they as they're breaking the as they're breaking the barricade. And it's just a much easier retakes situation. So a zombie on retakes. S tier, S tier. Now the other great thing about Azami is that she is so, so versatile. There's not one specific way to play her that is the best. Uh, there's multiple different approaches to her that you can use. So rather than saving your barricades for the retake and going for like the defusal of the bomb, you can also just do the standard, like I'm gonna use my uh, chemo barriers to set up the site. And a nice thing about that is it makes less uh, viable sites more viable. So let's take the gym bomb site for example. This bomb site is is very very exposed uh, from outside of the site. So any attackers on the windows can get lots of lots of uh, lines into sight from the gym window, the bedroom window, from the jacuzzi breach. If they open up this bathroom wall, they can see so much of the site. So gym is very very easily pressured from outside the site. But with a zombie, you can actually make it much, much safer and much more secure. So rather than just blocking up the windows, for example, as they're just going to melee, like we mentioned before, you can actually use your barriers to block off um, different lines of sight within the site. So this, now they can get a little angle over there, but you could also do one on the mattress here. You could do it on the edge of the mattress and extend them out this way. So now, anyone on the bath, wow, this one went a little little funky, that was supposed to be off the side, but anyone on this, on this master window, you can now safely cross all the way through site without being exposed anywhere from this window. So now, this entire area is safe to play. And to actually clear this, what would attackers have to do? Well, they'd have to be on this window, and then they would have to Nade this, or nade this, or nade this one, or gone six this one, or etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. They'd have to basically destroy all of them with some sort of utility to actually get that lines, those lines of sight, uh, back onto the site. And it's pretty cool. Now the other thing you can do is this is a very vulnerable spot from the lodgy hatch. So if the attackers are on the lodgy hatch, they can they can hold this door um, from there. But what you can do with the zombie again, you you make this. This in the hallway, and now all of a sudden they can't contest you from the lodgy hatch. And if they do, you can actually have that peeker's advantage on them. Now this is ideal with a second one, or uh, maybe with another one on this door. But that way you can contest the jacuzzi breach, hold the hallway, but you can also play back in here in lodgy if you need to. So there's a lot of really good reconstruction you can use with the zombie to either cut off lines of sight or actually make new paths uh, available for you as a defender to move around through. And not only is this really strong, but it also confuses the attackers because they're not used to those rotations being available. So if I, if I put another one on this door, I could sprint across this very easily without being killed by the jacuzzi breach. So this is a rotate that the, the attackers would not usually expect. Or I could rotate from the A-bomb into bathroom and they might not expect it, right? So it's, it's stuff like that where uh, the attackers kind of lose a sense of, of how their attack feels a bit, and it can really switch it up. It can be very, very interesting. Uh, but this is, I, I think, personally, one of, the, one of the good ways to play her on less viable sites. Not only does she make less viable sites more viable, but she can actually also make more viable sites even stronger. So 
kids dorms for example which i played a clip of this right at the start of the video but you can put a zombies on the bunk bed to hold much more deadly angles onto the trophy door you could even throw one up top there if you wanted but again they're probably just going to melee it from the right side of the doorway pretty safely um you can use these to like block off the the big the white window so people playing top white are much safer from this window you can use it on the kid's door to get a more um better cover for the for the push in through the the trophy entrance so this is all stuff the attackers would have to then worry about make it much more difficult for them to push in here or take a fight onto a player like back here holding this head glitch or a head glitch here or even on the white stairs if you put one on white stairs so doing this wow i i completely just whiffed the door frame somehow uh which it should have just went in the middle and made it like like sideways here but doing this makes makes strong sights even better now you do have to be careful because like for example this one you can just nade through the floor from the bottom white window um this is a really really good one on this lamp here because what happens as an attacker is you basically are then just watching nothing so you can't watch the top white they could probably sprint through here if you're playing especially against against lower ranks or worse players that that might not hit this shot you can sprint through there pretty safely and you can't really get an angle under it to actually see that top white player and if you want to super secure it you could you could even throw a second one attached to it so now the big window player really can't see anything at all um which kind of sucks to be them right i'm actually really excited to see if like we'll see some like other sites coming out uh that we don't typically see like maybe we'll see uh, a dining room comeback and, and competitive especially is what I'm most excited to see a zombie in because the competitive scene always plays stuff the best they do it the best way the most efficient way so maybe we'll see all those like extra tertiary sites uh, come out and make appearances with this this reconstruction tactic that a zombie brings so I think it'd be I think it could be really cool so let's take the uh, deer bomb site for example a very very strong position attackers like to go in on this is the Astro Repel because they can hold this split area. They can just be an absolute nuisance on this window. So what you can do is you can actually lock off this window. Maybe you wanna make your rotate here for once because this is typically just not viable whatsoever with that 90 window. And then the 90 window player can can still see into split a bit. So if you wanted, you could throw two here just to completely block it off. And then your whole team could play an Astro much, much safer to contest this bathroom area. And then that, 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 uh, bleh, Astro window is much more useless. This is a, even a situation where you could reinforce this hatch and play on the hatch. So you're, you're safer to nades below, but this is one of the reconstruction, um, options a zombie has to, Again, add the confusion to the attackers, attackers, shift up the meta. Expectations are gonna be all over the place with the zombie and the zombie is just so, such a creative operator. But the main thing you wanna take from this is you use them inside the building to block off outside lines of sight. Because if I'm throwing it just right on the window again, if I'm blocking off the window, they can repel and just melee this. Whereas this one, they'll have to waste an ash charge, a grenade, uh, a gone six and even with some ADSs on the wall here or one my discs around this window then it makes it even more difficult and annoying for the attackers to try and actually clear this to get the line of sight that they actually want uh maybe you hold maybe you hold bathroom too at the same time and 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 while you're holding bathroom you can have a teammate here to contest the push in bricks or or to actually play in this area because this is a really strong area to contest so use the barricades to to hold control of strong areas that your team wants to actually set yourself up to win more rounds so there you have it one of the last things i want to talk about uh the chemo bears are being super good for is drone holes um, now, of course, Mutant Mozzie do stops a stop actual drones from coming in, but the key difference with Azami is those grenades and flashbangs won't be able to come in anymore. So let's take this Cool Vibes drone hole, for example. This is a typical spot where attackers will nade from with a defender sitting on Cool Vibes. So this bar barrier alone stops you from being naded from this spot. Now, they could throw a nade in, sure. It'll break your barricade, 
But if that's the case, you can just toss another one up. So you can almost play this like like a Wamai would play this, where he keeps continuously putting his disc down. But every time they nade it, which they're wasting a whole grenade to actually get this, you can throw another barricade at it. Now, I believe she has five barricades in total. So if they're slow with it, you know, say they break one, you throw over another one, they use another nade. They then have to call someone else over because they only have two nades each to actually try and do it. So if they are so persistent on actually nading this, they're going to have to work very, very hard in order to actually nade you out of the spot now this is a this is a prime example of this drone hole this isn't gonna be of course ideal in every drone hole it'll also be great for the uh aqua bar because you can sit behind the aqua bar without getting naded from from above but of course you get naded from below and from the balcony so you just kind of be safe with those things but the drone holes are are super strong let me give you another example of drone holes and um how it can be super effective so this chalet wall is one that is very commonly tried to open by attackers when you're defending the basement bomb site. And keeping it closed is actually super strong because it allows you to open these walls and play for wine from back uh, back deep in snowmobiles. So so keeping this wall closed is, is fairly important, especially if the attackers are trying to get it open. Um, now, typically it'd be banded or cated, and then you would put some like ADSs here to stop grenades and things coming in to try and clear the ADSs. But what will the attackers do? They'll throw some flashbangs in, throw some grenades in, and then clear the bandit or cade or whatever's on the wall. The zombie can simply patch the drone hole, similar to the roof drone hole, drone hole on coastline, except this time uh, they will have to uh, waste an aid to actually try and break it. So if you patch up the drone hole, the biggest thing you have to know is that the attackers can still melee it. So if you're going to do it this way, it's really, really strong to have impacts and you're ready with your impact already in your hand. And then when they hit it that third time, you just throw both your impacts at the drone hole. And this is a ridiculously easy way to get free kills because they will be prone trying to melee this already. So by the time they actually stand up, both your impacts will go out and you will most likely get a kill. So this is a really easy way to get kills uh, on the drone holes. And it also makes it so the attackers either have to waste an aid on it or melee and potentially die. It's it's just a pretty simple way to use the barricades to actually um, just have an advantage. Just straight a straight up advantage. That's Mav. <laughs> No chance. I impacted him through the drone hole. <laughs> One other big thing I do see people doing uh, quite frequently with a zombie is they will stack all their Kima barriers together, which is a horrible idea because what that does is it allows them to clear all of them with one explosive. Now, two is okay. Two is okay because sometimes you do need the extra space covered by the barrier. But as soon as you use more than two, it kind of just seems like a waste to me. Uh, you don't really want to put all five of your of your barricades together because then one nade is 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 essentially just clearing all of your utility that you have as an operator. So it's not really a good trade off uh, from a defender's perspective. So I would just highly recommend not stacking all five together unless you know they have absolutely no explosives whatsoever in their lineup. And that includes Gone 6, Grenades, Ash Charges, Ophia Charges, Flores, uh, that should be it. I might be missing one, I don't know. So um, keep your eyes peeled. Keep your eyes peeled, I guess you could say. Okay, now besides all this information of her actual gadget, Azami is just nasty. She is just a nasty character. Her gun, this gun, is so good, uh, especially with, you know, your favorite one-time sight on it. I don't typically have the red dot. I usually have the uh, re the reflex B sight is my go-to, but I run it with vertical grip and compensator, and this thing is an absolute laser, and alongside her bar barriers, she's just a clutch machine. You can throw down her barriers of block lines of sight, take the 1v1s. Um, she is personally my favorite operator to play right now just just absolutely so fun i think ubisoft did a great job with her so shout out shout out to those guys i can't wait to see what year seven has in store uh for the rest of the operators and the new map coming mid-season so stay tuned for that guys thank you for watching i hope you learned something and peace out
Good call. I, I thought he was vase still, so I trusted you though. I trusted you. <laughs> and that's the LMG power right I there. Got, I for the guy that asked the timing was why LMGs wrong. are OP.